I have been working on in my sewing room. This is my monthly makes video where I kind of go over all the things that I have been sewing in the previous month. This makes video is sponsored by Sublime Graphics. They print uh, large format PDF patterns on a variety of different papers. They have a lot of options and put the sew is first in my opinion which is amazing. I will be telling you a little bit more about them later on in the video, but let's talk about what I've been making. Okay, so first things first, let's start with the top that I'm wearing. I did make this, I have not um, filmed this yet, so you haven't seen it in all its glory, but it is super, super cute. McCall's, and look, I already got a little juice on it, so I'm gonna have to get a little stain pen, but it is McCall's 8180. You might remember it from the pattern review video. I am sort of like cautiously optimistic about the large collar trend. Uh, I, there's some of them where the collars like droop down like little saggy boobs, which I'm like, I don't really understand that at all. But then there are other collars that kind of fall somewhere in the middle and I feel like this is, this is that. So it's kind of like a safe option to take on that trend. I ended up making view A, which actually uses purchase trim for the collar instead of self fabric. I uh, got my trim and fabric actually from Joanne and this is the eyelet that I chose. So it did come with like bias binding on the end and it was kind of like gathered into it and I just uh, seam ripped that off and pressed it out in order to get like a flat, um, a flat trim in order to, um, do I have another, oh no that's the on the camera. I was like is that another stain? Maybe white shirts are not going to be a large part of my future if I can't seem to keep my drinks and food in my mouth. Um, what was I even saying? Something about the collar. Either way, I had to like hack the collar a little bit in order to get it sewn into the top. But other than that, it was super simple. I will talk to you guys a lot more about this pattern. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on fit. I have a lot of thoughts on construction, more so than usual. Um, so stay tuned for the pattern review video on that. It'll be up sometime in July for sure. White is just like quintessential July top, right? Um, okay, so I also made, so Sew Together 21 for this month was the Seaside Culottes. You guys have seen them from me already uh, because I did them for the Spring Style Tour for Stylemaker Fabrics back in March, April. So I made them again. I do love that pattern. So I made them again, but this time I also made a matching top. Now the top isn't totally done yet, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of like the fabric and pattern situation. This top is Simplicity 1253. I think it's older. Oh, looking for the copyright real quick. I don't see it. I think it's from like uh, 2015 maybe if I could guess. No, 2014, pretty good guess. Um, but it's just a simple, you know, lightweight drapey top that I knew I could make out of what was left from making the Seaside Culottes. So I made this view here. Again, lots of thoughts on construction of this guy. I still have the arm side to do on one side and the hem to do at the bottom, <coughs> but the top is nearly done. And once I have the top done, then I will be able to film kind of the separate set that I made to go with the seaside culottes. So I wear the culottes with this and it looks like a romper. I wear them as separates and I have like three whole outfits. I'm just loving that concept so, so, so much. Also because you can cut out both projects at one time with your fabric and it's, I don't know, it just feels like a time saver. So I'm um, very close to finishing this and we'll be able to get that on the channel. I also thought this was just such a great little summery fabric. I feel like I got this from Joanne's clearance section probably the same time I got that pattern years and years and years ago. But, um, but you know, if you're not checking out the clearance section, really everywhere you go, you're, you're really missing out because there's some really cute stuff. So this gingham with the floral printed on top of it, I just think is so, so, so summery. So I'm happy to have like a cute little um, summer romper to wear with it, but I can also put this with black jeans in the fall. I can put the culottes with the long sleeve turtleneck, um, probably a black one, and have, you know, three seasons worth of outfits out of this one um, clearance fabric. So I don't even know what the price per 
garment is, but it's probably very, very, very low. So happy to bring you guys that one along with the Seaside Coolots. Speaking of the Rad Patterns Seaside Coolots, that is one of the patterns that I had printed by Sublime Graphics, today's video sponsor. So now is a great time for me to tell you all about them. And before you consider skipping ahead, you are going to want to know about them, I promise. So Sublime Graphics is a large format printer, right? They do the large format printing just like, you know, everybody else that you have heard about that does it, except they sew, or at least one half of them sews. And so she knows how challenging it is to use the printer paper that they provide at large format printers to cut out fabrics. She also knows how frustrating it is to print them at home and have to tape them all together. So be ready to have, like, this is such a game changer, you guys, I promise. What they have done is developed a, pri a proprietary software that takes the uh, patterns that can only be printed at home where you have to tape them all together and it digitally tapes them together for you. So you do not have to do any taping at all. You don't print anything at home. You send them the file that you would print at home. They digitally tape it together for you and then print it all out on one big sheet. And that's exactly what I did for the Seaside Coolots. So you can see these black lines here are what would be where the tape is, what would be where the little uh, printer papers are taped together. I know this is such a small little piece, but it's really all you can see on camera anyways. But you can see like this is an eight and a half inch wide little section. And then there's another one. And then you can imagine the other one going off here. So if you come across those patterns, <coughs> mood, <coughs> that only does the <laughs> print at home option, you can have them tape it together for you. And I know there's a gajillion different reasons why you wouldn't want to tape them together yourself. There are those of you that love it and find it therapeutic, more power to you. There are others of you that have like physical conditions that prevent you from being able to do it, time constraints that prevent you from being able to do it. So now you can send it off and have someone do it for you, which is great. The other amazing, amazing thing about Sublime Graphics that when I found out about, I was like, okay, this is legit. They print on tissue paper, you guys. They print on tissue paper. They actually print on three different types of paper. So you can get them to print it on your regular 20 pound paper. That's the same paper you have in your printing machine, same paper they use at coffee shops, all of that kind of stuff. You can still get that if you want that. You can also get it printed on an 18 pound paper, which they call tracing paper. And when I heard 20 pound, 18 pound, what's the difference? Like that seems so nominal. I actually really, really like the uh, tracing paper for projects that I know I'm going to be cutting out on kind of like stable fabrics. So if I'm going to be cutting out like some kind of jacketing or cotton or denim or something like that, I find the tissue paper can be a little bit cumbersome to work with because it's so lightweight. But this tracing paper, which is what this is, um, is actually really, really smooth to the hand it still has kind of that, you know, crispness that the regular coffee shop paper has, but there's something about it that is just, it's just really, really easy to use. It's super easy to cut out with your scissors um, and laying it out, it tends to want to do what you tell it to do, which is what I really, really like. On the other hand, they have the lightest weight paper and I can't remember the weight of it, I apologize, but it is their tissue paper. So you can see it here. Um, it's just kind of like a vellum, like a really lightweight vellum. If you're familiar with like paper products and stuff like that. Um, it's very lightweight, but not as lightweight as the big four. That is a whole other category. This is somewhere, this is somewhere else, something a little bit heavier than that. Um, but it's still lightweight. It's still perfect for those projects on like super lightweight drapey fabrics where the, you know, the copy paper kind of with the corners of it always gets stuck in the fabric somewhere and it's pulling it, it's super annoying. That doesn't happen with this tissue paper. If you saw the video where I talked about some sublime graphics the first time, I talked a little bit about some of the bleed and you can barely, barely even tell. Um, but they went back to the drawing board, found a different supplier of, of um, this lightweight paper 
and are getting much, much better results. So they're super happy with the quality of that paper. There's no ink bleed whatsoever. So if that's something that concerns you, they have remedied that. They also made some significant improvements to their website. So if you went before and tried to make a purchase and had some issues, those should all be remedied as well. So to kind of help you guys get your PDF patterns printed, they're offering a super, super good uh, coupon code just for Inside the Hem viewers. So be sure to check the description box, head to the link in the description box, use the coupon code, save a little money, and try out some of these papers. They will also send you samples of the papers if you request them, like no pattern printed, but just like a little square of it, um, if you wanna check it out as well. So highly encourage you to check out this small business. They really, really are rethinking um, how to make our sewing process better, easy, more efficient, more enjoyable, all those things. And I just love, love, love companies that are putting the customer experience first. Yay, customers. <laughs> um, then I also cut out another Love Notions Sunday romper. Um, the first Sunday romper that I made uh, was a little bit of a wearable muslin. It is very, very close, but it's definitely not perfect. And so I made a few other adjustments only to the crotch area and have cut out another one of those. But I had enough fabric out. And while I had that fabric out, I was like, you know what? I should go ahead and cut this into something. So the fabric is a border print. How pretty is this? I got this in New York City. I think that I always wanted to make like palazzo pants out of it. And whereas that's a great idea and a great application for ITY knit like this. Um, I don't really wear the one pair of ITY palazzo pants that I have now. I don't wear it as much as I should. Um, so I just decided to go ahead and abandon that and make the romper. And then I had enough left over to make this little self-drafted skirt. So basically all I did was take whatever width of fabric I had left for this, you know, border and cut that into two rectangles, sewed those together, put elastic in the waist and called it a day. I did have a little bit of fun with a drawstring and I even put little wooden beads on the bottom. I thought that was like a fun, cute idea. So this is a very basic beginner skirt that if you've only ever sewn like a couple of things in your life, you can definitely, definitely make this. So I'll probably do like a real quick and dirty tutorial for it. I'm not sure that it warrants a whole like pattern review style video simply because well, there's no pattern to review. I would just be modeling it and I can incorporate that into a tutorial. So that's why I'm thinking more of a tutorial for this one. But I was really proud of myself. Instead of just folding up this excess fabric and saying, oh, we'll put it in the scrap bin. I went ahead, cut something from it. I have no scraps of this left over and I have a skirt that I can wear and a romper coming soon. Um, so that was fun. I also um, made three swim cover-ups. So as you know, I'm doing the tutorials in July for swim cover-ups. Um, so in order to do the tutorials, I had to actually make the garments. So I made two of them. Well, one of them was like a fix it or nix it situation. I'd had this swim cover-up. It was very poorly made. So I kind of reworked it into something else. Talked about that all on my Instagram stories. The second one was the remake of that first one, how the first one should have been made all along. Um, out of this really, really gorgeous kind of like ombre tissue knit. So I know that I got this fabric in New York City. I know I fell in love with it because of the ombre effect. And I know that it's at my stash because it's so, so, so thin. I just could never imagine what I was gonna make from it. It's too thin even just for a t-shirt. And so when this concept of the swim cover-up came to mind, I said, that is perfect. And don't tell me that I could not go to a nightclub in Vegas, LA, New York, Miami, and wear this as an actual dress because in a pinch, I could and I would. So don't tempt me with a good time because I will show up in a super thin swim cover-up as a dress, right? Um, yo -ho. <laughs> um, okay, so I did that one. And then I also got, this fabric is in Joann's right now. It is a double gauze, um, box plaid, gingham plaid. I got this super bright yellow color. Um, and so 
that one I made into like a little caftan. I got pom pom trim, just went the whole nine yards with that one um, and had a lot of fun with that. So you'll be seeing tutorials for those um, in the next three weeks. Um, you'll also be seeing them modeling me me modeling them more in those videos as well if you want to see like you know more angles and stuff so stay tuned for that as well but those are so super quick so super easy as you can tell they're all pretty much self-drafted i mean there is somewhat of a pattern um for the caftan and i guess for the wrap one too and then the other one was just a matter of throwing it on my ditto form and like okay we'll put this here we'll put that there i'll show you all how to do it in the in the tutorials um, I also have been, speaking of fix it or nix it, I've been doing a lot of that here lately. When I went through all my clothes for Me Made May and decided what I was going to keep and what I was going to donate, um, there are a few things that ended up in what I'm calling a fix it or nix it pile. And these are clothes that I had gotten at Goodwill um, or that I had made like that swim cover up that just was kind of falling apart and I either needed to decide to re like fix it obviously, or mix it, <laughs> which means just like give it away or throw it away, to be honest, if it's really that bad. None of them are in that bad of a condition. So I've been doing that a lot lately. I'm having a lot of fun doing it on Instagram because people are having an option to kind of like weigh in on how they would fix it. And people love to give their opinions. And I love to get your opinions when they are solicited. Um, some of them truthfully are things that I would not have thought of. And happy to get them so this situation is perfect for that because it allows you guys to kind of you know be a part of the creation process and i am in a space where i can welcome it um so we're just collaborating and we're jiving over there in instagram stories so there's been two of them one was a red dress that was pretty much just too big um so i came up with a clever way to kind of take in the side seams a little bit i also added a tie to the back um, to kind of, you know, give it a little bit more waist definition and then add a little tie detail on one of the shoulders. Super fun. And then the other one was a oversized, uh, half placket, uh, linen-y type of shirt, which is very, very on trend, these oversized shirts. And so that's why I got it, but I think it was a little bit too big, but maybe now it's not as big because I've gotten bigger. I don't know. When I ended up like going back to it this past, because I've had that for probably a year. Um, when I went back to fix it or nix it, I was like, you know, the oversized trend is kind of, this proportions are okay. Um, but I ended up having to like, I shortened the sleeve on that one, I think, and cropped it. Yeah. So I just worked on the proportions a little bit because it was so big. Um, so that one was fun. And then I tried to fix a third one, but everybody on Instagram was like, no, it looks good just as it is. So I just left it, hung it back up in my closet. So I've got some more of those coming. I think I've got a denim dress I'm going to work on this week. Um, and just going to clear out that rack of like Goodwill refashion -y type of stuff. So I was able to work on those too. And then I want to throw in one little quick, I guess, tip. Um, so as you guys know, I've been on my pants fitting journey and a lot of these uh, changes that I'm making to the patterns now are all pretty much relegated to just the crotch. And a lot of the changes that you make in a crotch are very minimal, like quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch. And so, you know, it feels a little bit like how many pairs of muslin shorts can I possibly make? So what I've been doing is buying sheets at Goodwill and then making them into pajama shorts. So I have a whole new collection of pajama shorts. Some fit better than others, um, but tweaking that crotch in like a pretty decent stable woven is makes it really easy for you to be able to tell kind of where the issues are. Um, so I just make all the issues to the crotch, put an elastic in the waist, and then I'm assessing fit like from the high hip down. Um, so if you're on your pants fitting journey as well, and you're trying to find ways to like, how can I make a million muslins without feeling super wasteful? Maybe that is a tip you would like as well. The sh my sheets at Goodwill are all pretty much in really good condition. They're $2 for any size. Um, and they have some really, really cute prints too. So one set I ended it up when I cut out the shorts, I ended up going ahead and cutting out a matching top too. Same thing as I was talking about with the other set. Um, so that I can have like a matching PJ set and I might just keep doing that as we go forward. I just have a cute collection of like vintagey looking, you know, repurposed, refashioned sheet 
pajamas. <laughs> um, anyways, but yeah, so like I said, I was pretty busy um, getting some sewing projects done, which felt really, really good. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff cut out too. So when I get to sewing again, I'm just kind of ready to hit the ground running and I don't have to think about things too much. I have another set of projects where the fast fit worksheet is all done. That's my little system that I use. You can get it too on my website, inside the hem.com, um, that I use to kind of decide which, uh, size pattern I'm going to cut out. It helps me determine, um, kind of basic alterations that I would need to make to those too. So that's a lot of the brain power that goes into sewing before you even cut your fabric. And I have that done on a couple of projects as well. So I'll just be able to look at that sheet. I can see clearly the sizes that I want to cut. Just go ahead and cut them out and get sewing too. So I'm in a really good position for July. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of fun makes and I can't wait to show you guys them. I can't wait to get them on the Make It Monday um, playlist and show you them in all their glory. Uh, please let me know what you have been working on. Have you just kind of been taking it easy because it's summer? I get that the, uh, during the summertime, people spend a lot more time outside um, and less time in their sewing room. So I get it if you have kind of been, you know, neglecting. I, don't, I hate to use words like neglecting or in a slump or whatever. It's not necessarily that. You're just prioritizing things differently. I totally get that. Um, but if you have been in your sewing room too, I'd love to know what you have been working on. Um, I read a comment recently, someone's already working on their fall stuff. So if you're there, let me know that too. But before you go, do not forget to uh, head to the description box, check, uh, get the link to Sublime Graphics. Don't forget the coupon code. It's an amazing, amazing deal um, where you can save some money on getting your PDF patterns printed exclusive to Inside the Hem viewers. Thank you so much. Um, and try them out. You're going to love the tissue paper, I promise. But that is going to do it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Bye!